What's up everyone, welcome back to Switchcraft, and with the announcement of the Atari VCS in recent days, it got me thinking, should we crowdfund games or consoles at all? Before I step on my soapbox and hopefully give you a buffet of food for thought, I ask you to consider subscribing if you haven't already, and hit that little bell down below if you like what you hear and see, so that you can get notified whenever I come out with the latest content. Now that that's out of the way, let's unpack the question I posed earlier. A question that many of you are perhaps asking yourselves. Should I, or we, crowdfund a video game? For those of you who may not yet know what this is, it's a way of someone who has an idea for something but is just missing the capital, can potentially turn that dream into a reality using the modern wonders of the credit card and the internet. Essentially, the creator makes a website for their idea on a site like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. These sites are set up to take donations from anyone with an internet connection and they become backers. There are often different levels or tiers of backers, each usually with a corresponding minimum donation level and with correspondingly better and more valuable perks. For video games, these can range all the way from your name on a website for a small $5 donation for example up to your name actually in the credits of the game, along with multiple copies of special editions before the game gets released to other backers or the general public, and everything in between. Sounds pretty sweet, right? You dish out some extra cash to a person or a team of people who share your passion for a type of game you would all like to see made, and without your support it wouldn't be possible. And if you do help out, everyone's dream gets realized. You get a copy and some awesome swag. Maybe. Here's the catch. There's nothing to stop the person or team who took your money to actually deliver the product, never mind in the form or in the timeline they actually promised. You're hoping they stick to their word and deliver what they promised, how and when they promised to deliver it, based almost solely on trust and with essentially no consequences if they don't. History has taught us that both of these extreme scenarios I just mentioned are possible. Fans, or backers, have seen their wildest dreams come true with truly spectacular crowdfunded games like Darkest Dungeon, Hyperlight Drifter, and Divinity Original Sin. Games that delivered on their promise, made fans happy, and provided the gaming experience that truly satisfied and would not have been possible otherwise. For each of these titles though, there are multiple examples of games whose timeline of development essentially mirror that of the worst case scenario I described earlier. One specific case I'm going to describe today was recently in gaming news, and for all the wrong reasons. In 2016, Night Drive Studios began a Kickstarter to bring the RPG System Shock back to life. This crowdfunding campaign began in 2016 and raised a whopping $1.35 million dollars on a budget of $900,000. Night Drive Studios even had a preliminary demo to whet the appetite of hungry gamers. It looked like smooth sailing. This is where things began to take a turn though. A couple of months after the fundraising ended, the studio delayed the release for the game from December of 2017 to spring of 2018, and just a few days ago it was delayed again. Indefinitely. What? The studio's CEO, Stephen Kick, let backers know on the Kickstarter website that there was an underlying problem, and I quote, We were too successful. Maybe we lost our focus. The vision began to change. We moved from a remaster to a completely new game. What? This isn't what fans asked for. This isn't what fans paid for. Most think that if they did what they said they were going to do to get people's money, they would not have this problem. Stephen Kick has gone on to say, I put the team on a hiatus while we reassess our path so we can return to our vision. We are taking a break but not ending the project. Translated, this means we raised more money than we could have ever imagined, couldn't control ourselves, acted like little children in a candy store, spent our entire allowance on so much candy that we not only gave ourselves a stomachache but full blown type 2 diabetes. But don't worry, we're not dead. We're going to figure out how to come back and deliver what we originally promised. But to be honest, we're probably going to need an advance on our next few months allowance. Sorry. As crazy as this may sound, this is not illegal. There are essentially no consequences and we don't even have any way of knowing what they actually spent 1.35 million dollars on. And there's nothing anyone can really do about it. And this is Kickstarter we're talking about. 
the traditionally viewed safer crowdfunding option that actually has prerequisites like a proof of concept. Sites like Indiegogo require nothing. The bottom line here, people, is that you should beware of crowdfunding websites for things like this. You must go into these relationships fully knowing that you may not get what you originally signed up for or when you signed up to get it, if you get it at all. Honestly, there are some developers and games that we would have never known about if it was not for these financing options like these sites. But everyone must keep in mind that backing these campaigns is very much like gambling. You have to ask yourself if you want the jackpot bad enough that you're willing to potentially walk away with nothing. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video and if you've made it to the end, let me know down in the comments below if you have ever backed a video game Kickstarter. If so, what were the results? Be sure to follow me on Twitter at CraftSwitch and I'll see you all next time. Switchcraft out.